Okay, in this video I'm going to take a look at um, several interesting options that you can now do with the UV Master plugin. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the demo head and I'm going to go over and dock the plugins to the tray. I'll open up UV Master and I'll choose Work on Clone. That way we can start off with an object that has no subdivision uh, levels. Because I already know that I want to unwrap this and keep the seam in the back, I'm just going to turn on control painting. I'll attract the seams to the back of the object and uh, with a little blue line and then we'll turn over to protect and we'll protect the front. We'll also attract that just a little higher in the back as well. just protect it a little more on the sides. Okay, let's go ahead and unwrap this and then we'll flatten it and check the results. So we'll flatten it, unflatten, let's find out why, oops, let's find out why the UV is, there we go, <laughs> apparently flipping. All right, everything's good. So now at this point, let's let's just sort of see uh, some of the things that are currently possible with this. We're going to go ahead and copy the UVs. We'll go back over to our regular demo head, and then we'll paste the UVs onto this. So we'll do paste UVs. Now, at this point, the UV should be on this model. And in ZBrush 4, we now have the option to go into our UV map section and choose this option called Morph. UV. That's going to show us the actual UV layout. And if we hit Shift F to show the wireframes, we can now see that this uh, UV map has been applied to this object. Now, sometimes while you're working with your object, it's just more useful or more beneficial to be able to work on a flattened version. Uh, because when we are dealing with the full three dimensional version, uh, we have to work around the object. If we wanted to paint, let's say, goggles from the front to the back or any sort of uh, poly paint or deformation work. So sometimes it's very helpful to be able to work on the flattened object. So if we morph the UV in this case, you'll notice that we actually have the ability to poly paint this. So I'm going to switch the wireframes off for right now and I'll switch over to a red color and then make sure deformation is off, poly paint mode is on. You'll see that we can actually begin to poly paint directly onto this mesh. Now that's interesting, but what you'll notice is if we exit out of Morph UV, the poly paint just goes right away. So to work around this, we can attempt to copy the poly paint back to a texture map, and then from there pull it from the texture map back to the poly paint again if we so desire. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll paint onto the mesh, and then we'll come over to texture and we'll do new from poly paint. But one of the things you're going to notice at this point is the option for new from poly paint is now grayed out. It's not an option. We can't click on it. And even if we do something like new texture, it's still not going to give us that option. So ultimately, while we can paint on the model, we really can't keep the poly paint. Same thing holds true for deformation. So for example, if we go in, I'll go ahead and lose the poly paint just to make that obvious. If we turn on deformation, turn off the wireframes, you'll notice that we do have the ability to actually paint deformation onto the model. And that in and of itself, again, is really interesting and very useful uh, in a number of different circumstances. However, when we go to exit out of the morphed UV, all that information goes away. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at what can be done with this. We'll go ahead and jump back over to the cloned version. This is our low res object, and if we go into the UV Master plugin again, we'll notice that we can flatten this out and we'll see our UV, okay, which is excellent. Now, one of the things that uh, first sort of got my attention is this is actually a 3D object. So we can actually move around this in space, we can zoom in, zoom out. And right off the bat, because this is a flattened piece of geometry, there's some very interesting things that this uh, allows us to do. One, if we want is to simply go over to document and use Z app link to port this over to Photoshop we can then paint onto the object paint a texture map for it and bring it right back into ZBrush and then apply either the texture to poly paint or the texture to the UV map 
or we can apply it back as deformation using the displacement map option. So some interesting things that open up from that possibility. The truth is though we could do the same thing of Z app linking to Photoshop just by unwrapping the object uh, with the Morph UV option. So what makes this interesting uh, is the fact that if this is a, a GOZ object and if we've truly flattened this, which we have, not just morphed it, if we switch over to something like the move brush we can now begin to actually edit the shape of our UVs. So this becomes very 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 interesting to us as texture artists, as modelers, sculptors, the ability to now go in and adjust the UV map on your own is really very powerful. Now we can't separate polygons off into islands but we can at least go through and clean up and work with the mesh. And if we want to see how the deformation is actually uh, or how the changes to our UV mesh are actually being applied to the textures we can simply go down because this is a 3D object we can go down to the tool menu open up the texture option so let's find that and then we'll pick one of the UV checkers I'll go ahead and load one of those in real quick and we'll get that applied to the object then we'll pull it into the texture palette and apply it to the mesh so you can now begin to see how the deformation is actually applied to the object and we can keep this on and begin to maneuver our mesh and you can see the stretching effect happening in real time. So that in and of itself is quite interesting and opens the door for some very interesting possibilities. Let's go ahead and turn that off though and I'm just gonna go back to UV Master since I don't want to keep these deformations. I'll unflatten the object and then I'll unwrap again. That should restore the, uh, the UV to its prior state. Ooh, let's go ahead and repaint some of those control lines. So let's go back to control painting. We'll attract. There we go. And let's unwrap again. And then we'll turn on flatten. Great. Okay. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that if you have multiple subdivisions for your object, you can't actually flatten the mesh. So if I subdivide this mesh several times and go to flatten, it'll give us an error message. Go ahead and undo and go back to the lowest subdivision level and if we look in our geometry menu you'll notice no subdivision history. What's interesting about this though is that if we flatten the mesh because this is actually 3D geometry there's absolutely nothing stopping us from subdividing the mesh at this point. So if I go into geometry and divide, 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 I'm now working with a million poly object. A couple of interesting things then become possible with this. First and foremost, let's talk about poly paint. If I simply go into the standard brush, choose a color again, I'll go ahead and remove the wireframes, you'll notice that I can still, or at this point, we'll turn the wireframes back on, I can now again poly paint onto this object. Let's turn off deformation and make sure that just color is turned on. And you'll notice at this point, having undone what I did, we lost the ability to unflatten the object. This will happen on occasion, so we're going to undo until we can get back to its base state, then we'll flatten it again. All right. With it flattened, we'll go ahead and subdivide up to about a million polygons. And now, in RGB mode, standard brush, we'll go ahead and poly paint on like we did before. This is just for proof of concept to show that we can do it. Now, what's interesting about this is while the Morph UV didn't give us the option to apply that back to a texture map, we actually have that option now that we're using the flattened version. So this becomes very interesting. If we go into our UV map, we'll choose 2048, and we can choose now new from polypaint. This texture then can be cloned out and applied back to our other object. So what this means is we now have the ability to polypaint on flattened objects and then create textures and apply them back to our three-dimensional objects. In essence, we can now texture on the flattened version of the mesh, which wasn't really possible before.
I'll go ahead and turn that off and I'll go ahead and fill the object with a white color. Now, this also opens the door to begin utilizing all of ZBrush's other tools. So, for example, if I wanted to texture the entire object in the round, I can now activate something like Spotlight. We'll go ahead and load in just any random texture. This one will do fine. We'll load that into Spotlight. I'll go ahead and shrink that down just a little bit. I'll increase the Spotlight radius, and then I'll pin that to the, to the uh, Spotlight tool. We'll turn off the Spotlight by pressing Z, and now you'll notice that we can actually begin to paint with this. With this at a million polygons, and still, again, checking to make sure that we can unflatten it if necessary, we can begin to paint texture deformation onto the flattened version of the object. This allows us to texture the object rapidly, very, very quickly, all the way around. Of course, this information can then be transferred directly back to a mesh or to a texture map. We'll go ahead and do new from poly paint, and you'll see it right back onto the object again. At this point, I'll clone that so it's not tied necessarily to this tool. We'll drop down to the lowest subdivision level. We actually really don't need to drop down to the lowest subdivision level, but just for the sake of the argument, if at a million polygons we attempt to unflatten, it will tell us at this point that the topology of the mesh has changed. And if we ask it to transfer this back to the lowest uh, resolution mesh by saying yes, it'll tell us that that was just not possible. Now, what we're seeing here at this point is the texture map on the object. Okay. So what we've effectively done now is leverage the fact that we can open up uh, UV Master. We can flatten our object out flat. We can now utilize the texture painting capabilities inside of ZBrush, both poly painting and with Spotlight, to rapidly texture our entire object all at once. This can then be transferred back onto the object, and we can fix any seams that are left. So that in and of itself is a very powerful and uh, useful feature of working with UV Master. Let's take a look at one last option for this. We'll go ahead and turn off the texture. We'll go ahead and flatten this object out one more time. Now that it's flattened, and again, no geometry because you can't flatten an object with multiple subdivision levels. We'll go ahead and subdivide this up into the million poly mark. Now, just to make life a little bit easier, we'll go ahead and zoom in. I'll switch over to the standard brush. I'm going to turn off Spotlight by hitting Shift Z right now. I'll go into Drag Rectangle, and this, again, just as a proof of concept, we'll go ahead and turn on Deformation by turning on Z Add. We'll turn off Poly Paint as well. I'll increase the Z intensity, and I'm just going to begin to draw in some deformation to this object. Again, useful for us to be able to texture the entire object all at once. When we're finished with this, you'll notice if we try to unflatten again, it's going to tell us that we can't do this. If it'll ask us if we want to transfer the uh, results. We already know that that's not going to work, so I'm going to say cancel. Having done that, we've lost the ability to work on the mesh. So again, I'll undo until we get rid of that extra deformation. And now we'll flatten the object out again. Not sure exactly why that happens, but when it does, easy to work around. So subdivide the object up to about a million polygons again. Now that we've got that million poly mark, we'll go ahead and again simply draw in deformation all over the object. So to get this deformation off of the object and then back on to our model again, we can use a displacement map. And what's interesting about this is because this is actual geometry and it has a subdivision history, we can make a displacement map just like we normally would. So we'll go into the UV map section, make sure we're using a reasonable size map for this. We'll open up the displacement map settings. I'll turn on adaptive and keep smooth UV on, and I'll just hit create displacement map. Let's go ahead and find out what's happening with that. Back into displacement map. Let's map cannot be created while the highest subdivision level is active. Switch to a lower subdivision level. Duh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Punk all the way down to one. All right, let's try this again. Into displacement map, create displacement map. It's going to look at the higher subdivision levels and transfer the deformation back onto the map. When it's finished, it'll apply that and we'll see it projected onto the low res mesh. Okay. Also bringing back our texture map, we'll go ahead and turn that off for right now. Now, with this displacement map, it also noted its alpha depth, which is good. We'll go ahead and clone the displacement map, putting it over into our alpha menu so we can reapply it. Now, we'll go ahead and unflatten our object. We can now go back over to our original object that had the deformation levels. We'll subdivide this up to about a million polygons. We'll come back into the displacement map options. We'll choose the map that we just created. That's the stars. We'll turn the displacement map on. We'll go into mode so this becomes an actual 3D deformation. Let's go ahead and get rid of the red texture so we can see that just a little bit better. So we can see that projected onto our object. Now, you'll also notice that the intensity is set as it was for this displacement. So if I simply apply the displacement map back to the object at this point, we're now dealing with actual 3D deformation over the, surf of the surface of the object. So simply by leveraging the power of UV Master, we're able to do some things that we weren't easily, uh, weren't easily possible before. We're able to edit the UV uh, geometry inside the UV space, which is nice. We're also able to polypaint onto our object and to basically do textures using the new spotlight feature. And then third, we're able to actually apply deformation to the entire object all at once, seeing the deformation, and then we can apply this back using the displacement map option to our regular object. So I hope you found that useful. There's some interesting things uh, that we can now do with uh, the UV Master tool.